What's up, fellas? In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the worst contracts in the entire NBA. I have six players here ranked in order of how much money they are making this season, and I'm gonna explain why they are the six worst contracts in the entire league. If you have a different opinion, you wanna let me know who you think has a worse contract than any of these players, then let me know down in the comment section below. With those things said, really, really quickly, uh, what's up? My name is Tucker. If you guys are new here, uh, you can sub to the channel down below. I upload NBA content twice a day, every single day. Also, if you're enjoying the content, a great way to let me know is to like the video. It doesn't take very long. It helps get out to more people on YouTube, and you can check me out at various socials at the bottom of the screen. Those are in a link tree down in the description below. With those things said, let's go and talk about the six worst contracts in the entire NBA, beginning with the eighth highest paid player in the entire NBA. Does anybody know who the eighth highest paid player is in the league for this season, in terms of this season's salaries? It's Blake Griffin. Blake Griffin is making $36.5 million this year. He's under contract for two more years, including this one. And it's not a great contract. It's just not. Uh, he did make an All-NBA team a couple of years ago, and in that specific season, he was worth the money he was making. Past that, it has been a struggle for Blake. And whether that be from an availability standpoint as it relates to injuries or from an effectiveness standpoint as it relates to injuries, Blake over the last couple of years has just not been Lob City era Blake with the exception of that really, really good, um, you know, year in which he was an all NBA caliber player. You know, um, it's, it's unfortunate that that continues to happen for Blake because he is still incredibly talented and he's really worked to expand his game and to be able to knock down three point shots. One of the best big man passers we've seen uh, in the last you know decade or so of the NBA. Uh, but unfortunately, that contract is a bad one. Thankfully, they'll be out from under it relatively soon, but it is going to be an incredibly difficult one to move via a trade, which is a theme throughout this video, which brings us to the next player who's another big guy. He was the 20th highest paid player in the league this season and whose contract is going to be difficult to, to, to be traded. And it's Kevin Love, who makes $31 million this season, is under contract for three years, including this one, and has been you know on the trade market for years, basically since the moment he signed the contract and the Cavs realized, you know, without this LeBron guy, we're probably not gonna be all that great. Teams have been trying to figure out a way to get Cleveland to give up Kevin Love, uh, but for the most part, they've been asking for assets in exchange for Love Whereas the teams that are looking to trade for love are like, hey, we'll take this giant contract off your hands, but you need to give us something. Um, so that is a big sign, right? When a player that is Kevin Love that, you know, has had plenty of injury issues and things like that. But when he signed the contract was a very, very good player and presumably can still help some teams in some way. When you have a player like that, that teams are asking for assets in addition to love just to take on the contract. That's how you know it is a really, really bad deal. It's not just the fact that he makes 31 this year. It's not just the fact that the availability has been a question mark. It's not just the fact that the effectiveness has been a question mark, but it's the fact that this is a contract that runs for the next few seasons as he continues to get older and older. And teams are just really questioning if Kevin Love is even a guy that is worth trading for at this point, which are all bad things if you're a Cleveland fan, because they've actually got some decent things going in Cleveland right now. But one of those things is not the Kevin Love contract. Next up now, the 35th highest paid player in the league for this season, guy that recently signed this contract, and it's Gordon Hayward. He is making $28.5 million uh, this season. He is under contract for the next four years, including this year, and is actually decent. Like, there's nothing wrong with Gordon Hayward as a player. He's available, he's solid, and as long as he's healthy, He's a good player. The problem with this, of course, is the availability. There's always the possibility that injuries, you know, plague this entire the entirety of this four-year contract. And if he is not available, then this 28 to 30 million dollars he's making over the next four years is going to be a huge, huge overpay. So this one, in contrast to the Love and Griffin ones, considering you know how poorly they've been playing, is not necessarily about the ability of Gordon Hayward, but it's more so about the availability moving forward and the fact that you don't really know if this guy is going to be on the floor and providing value for that $28.5 million to $30 million that he's going to be making over the next four seasons. And of course, the length of the contract comes into play here as well. Uh, so another guy that is an incredibly overpaid player, not only this year, but moving forward as well. Next up now, fourth on the list, it's funny because Hayward is like the only wing on this entire list. I'm looking at it now and all of these guys are bigs, which is interesting. They're either fours or fives. Uh, but continuing with, the, continuing with that theme is the fourth player on this list. who is the 40th high, highest paid player in the entire league. And it is Al Horford, who makes $27.5 million. This year is under contract for the next three years, including this one. And is just, he's fine, right? He's 34. He's a serviceable big, can do some good things defensively, can space a little bit, but he's just old. Like Al Horford's been doing this a long time. He's got a lot of minutes on his body and he's just not worth $30 million or almost $30 million. And everybody knew it. 
when he signed the contract in Philly. I would argue that Al Horford probably knew it when he signed the contract in Philly, but he said, you know what? I'm going to opt out of Austin because Philly's willing to pay me all this money. And a year later, they dropped a first round pick just to get rid of him. Um, so it's just... Again, these guys aren't necessarily bad players. Like it's either an injury issue or they're just really, really overpaid compared to what they're actually providing on the basketball court right now. But Al Horford is a perfect example of that. Is the 40th highest paid player in the league. Next up now is uh, he's the 43rd highest paid player in the league for this season. But this is going to be a really, really bad one over the next couple of seasons, in my opinion. Recently signed, and it's Rudy Gobert. He makes 26 and a half this year. But he's under contract, including this season, for the next six seasons. And once that new deal kicks in that he signed that's worth over $200 million, he's going to be making $40 million a year as he continues to get older. He's not old, but as he continues to get older. And that's just a huge problem, in my opinion. The fact that Rudy Gobert is not a great offensive player and making $40 million a year is a huge issue. And I understand that he is a defensive player caliber year, caliber, defensive player of the year caliber guy on the other end of the floor. I understand that. I understand the value of that. However, players that are not huge offensive difference makers should not be making 40 plus million dollars a year. I don't care how good you are defensively. That is just the way that the league is built. It is so difficult to find really high level offensive guys that when you find one, they're the guys that you need to pay 40 plus million dollars to. And Rudy Gobert is not one of those guys, and he will not be one of those guys ever, and he will never be worth $40 plus million, and you cannot convince me otherwise. And for the next six seasons, the Utah Jazz will have this guy under contract, and for a good amount of those, he will be making a ton, a ton of money compared to the value that he actually provides to the basketball team. Nothing against Rudy Gobert. Personally, I'm just not a huge fan of either him as a player in terms of what he does in the postseason or what he's going to be making over the next couple of years. And last up now on the list is the 49th highest paid player in the entire league for this season. And it's one that I don't think a lot of people are talking about because he is still like a good player, but I don't know if they know how long he is still under contract for. And it's Draymond Green. Makes 22, a little bit over 22 million this year and is under contract for the next four seasons, including this one with the salary continuing to increase over those next couple of years. And Draymond is still a very good player. And I understand that statistically, it might not always look great, but as a facilitator, as a defender, as a team leader, he is still really, really great. Um, but that is only going to decrease over the next, over the next couple of seasons as some of, the, some of his athleticism continues to get taken away. And offensively, in terms of scoring and shooting, it's been really, 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 really bad for Draymond. And I don't necessarily have an explanation for that outside of age. And when you consider the long-term length of this contract, this one's going to be pretty bad in a couple of seasons. And I know that Draymond is still valuable to this group, and he you know, was incredible for those teams when they were making the finals and, and, and winning titles and things like that. But I just... I struggle to see the value in paying him, you know, $30 million in two seasons. You know what I mean? And and I know that they kind of had to sign under the contract when they did, uh, but it's going to be an issue over the next couple of years. And I think people are going to, you know, continue to see that over the next couple of years for Draymond. But that is going to be the end of today's video. And I thank you all very much for watching. Once again, my name is Tucker. As I said in the beginning, if you're looking for consistent NBA content, this is a great place to be. You can subscribe to the channel. You can like the videos. You can check me out at various socials at the bottom of the screen and a link to down in the description below. With all those things said, hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you all next time.